Hey friends, welcome back. In today's video, we are showing you how we built our very own little spooky cemetery in the front yard. And we've never decorated the outside of any of our houses for Halloween, so we were really excited to do this. You guys know we do everything DIY and on the cheap if possible. So uh, we're gonna kind of show you the process of how we made this little fence and then some awesome realistic looking tombstones. Starting off with some cedar one by twos, we went ahead and cut these down to use them for our fence posts. This is probably the only thing that we actually measured and cut to a specific size. And this will just depend on the height that you want your fence to be. And then we cut one into a point so that it acts as a stake in the ground. We also purchased trellis replacement wood and those come in a bundle. I think it was like $22 for a huge bundle. So you'll see here in just a moment, Luke's gonna cut a really big stack um, in half. And that's what we actually use for the pieces that go in between, as well as the horizontal pieces that act as the frame. There's literally no exact way to set it. You just kind of throw them on there and see whatever looks good to the eye. And then we're going to add some wood glue and nail them down. So we got the inspiration for this fence from another YouTube channel and they are called Wicked Makers. They have so many cool Halloween tutorials on there, like really, really cool ones. So shout out to them for this awesome, easy spooky fence idea. Once we assembled each panel, Luke went ahead and started installing them and I just stained them in place. You could also do this before putting it together at all, um, but we didn't really have the time for that. So I just slapped some stain on it. I did not finish it with polyurethane, you could. I want mine to get weathered over time. So we literally just threw stain on it and called it a day. Next up, we're gonna get started on those tombstones. So grab some cardboard, we're gonna make a template. I grabbed this basket because the curve was about the same size that I wanted the arch to be. I traced half of it and then drew a straight line down to finish it out. Then we're going to just get it all cut to size the way we want it. You can freehand this, you can do different designs. I also think you can print templates off online. So I think Martha Stewart maybe had some. So I laid my template down onto my plywood, traced one side, flipped it, traced the other, and ended up with a somewhat symmetrical shape. And then Luke's gonna cut that out with a jigsaw. So Luke had this brilliant idea to use Henry's feather finish. It's a concrete skim coat product over these tombstones. It looks like actual concrete. It's made out of some kind of concrete. We used it on our sunroom floors. If you guys remember that, um, we've used it on countertops before. We've now used it on tombstones. So a staple in our house is this stuff. And we thought this looked so cool because it actually is like a cement finish. Um, so yeah, I went ahead and did a coat of this. I had to play around with the mixing a little bit. This first one was a little bit more difficult, but as I remixed, I got better and better with it. And I think I did a full first coat and then maybe a touch up in some areas for a second coat. I let that dry for about a day and then applied polycrylic over top to seal it. All right, so I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and use stencil vinyl to put the words onto our tombstones. The good thing about this is it doesn't need to be perfect. It's supposed to look like an old tombstone. So I've got three ready to go to be printed onto some stencil vinyl, and we're just gonna try. We're gonna just, we're gonna give it a shot and see what happens. These are textured, which I wanted them to be, just because it looks more realistic. 
um, but that will make it a little bit more difficult for the stencil. So we're going to go ahead and get started here, get some stuff cutting and see how they turn out. All right, so they're a little over, they're about 17 and a quarter. So I think I'm going to do, yeah, probably about 13 inches will be good on that width wise. For my fellow Cricut users, I'm not gonna go into great detail about the process of this. I've talked about it in a previous video that I'll be sure to link, but um, stencil vinyl, if you haven't used it, is the best way to make a stencil. I've tried several different methods, and this is the way to get the cleanest edges and lines, and it works on so many different textures and surfaces. So I would highly recommend this. If you don't have a Cricut, I love my Cricut so much. If you're a crafter, it's 100% worth it. You'll be surprised how often you use it. So I cut these out individually into strips so that I could apply them one at a time. I just find the less I have to transfer at a time, the easier of a time I have. And I was really worried that they wouldn't stick well to this material, but because I finished it really well with that polycrylic, I think I did two coats. It actually went on really well and this was a very easy process. Biggest tip with painting over a stencil is to put very little on your brush and just do multiple coats. Take it slow, I know it's a pain, but um, you know, it's really the best way to get a nice clean result. And because I used just regular acrylic craft paint, I decided to go ahead and do another coat of polycrylic over top just so it can withstand any weather over time. And then I'm going to add some moss to these tombstones. I feel like this is what gives them that like, I don't know, 1700s spooky look. And I initially tried to use Gorilla Glue because I thought it would maybe hold up a little bit better, but ultimately, it didn't dry quick enough and I was having trouble making it work. So I got out old trusty hot glue gun and got to work. The main thing I had to keep in mind when placing the moss was just that the placement was different for each tombstone and they didn't look cookie cutter or like the same. I didn't want it to look like you bought it from a store. I wanted it to look a little bit more authentic. So then we're going to apply some stakes on the back of them to hold them in the ground. If we had gone with thicker plywood, we would have just nailed them in, but I was afraid that it would split the wood or crack the concrete mixture stuff that we used on top. So we decided to go for Velcro strips. It's actually working really well. And if you wanted to like switch your tombstones around, you could do that. So I think this actually was a great option. So we ended up with four tombstones. What I would like to do in the future is make more of them and in different shapes. So we've kind of got a variety in there and really fill this thing out. We're gonna throw some spooky spider webs on this and yeah, then I'll kind of give you guys a view of everything. In the future, we want to definitely continue to build on our Sleepy Hollow spooky theme here, but it was a great start for our first year decorating outside. I actually made this sign last year before I had a Cricut using carbon paper. There's a great blog post that I found that you can follow to do the same thing. I did design it myself, but you can use, I think she maybe has one on there or you can design your own. And yeah, you guys leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. Did you like this? I know it's not like the grandest display, but we're hoping that it grows over the years. If you did like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys in the next one.